one of the leading principalities that existed in Lebanon. Of course, it pre, it's pre-Islamic and it comes from the Hadramaut. The original family comes from the Hadramaut, which is today in the Yemen and migrated over the years and established themselves first in Damascus and became a leading principality. But over the years, because of the different uh, uh, interactions with uh, empires, whether it was the uh, Abbasids uh, or the Ottomans, they eventually settled down in the mountains of Lebanon and the Gizgarta region. Now, what's interesting about them, they were not the only ones, but they are one of the principal uh, groups uh, that essentially found refuge in the mountains of Lebanon. Now, let me go backtrack a little bit because I think most people will probably not know the details about the history of this country. Uh, Lebanon, uh, as a geographic entity, is very tiny, less than 10,000 square kilometers, a little more than 10,000 square kilometers, but it is much bigger than its geographical size because of its mountainous regions. And throughout history, various leading families found refuge in certain areas. The Hassanids, for example, established in the Zgharta area. They were a principality, which means they were not under the control of one of the empires. They were relatively independent. And for a long period of time, they did not have to pay financial um, sums of money in order to secure their freedom. They could interact independently from the empires under which they lived until the 1700s, where in fact the Ottomans exercised absolute power uh, over most of Lebanon and had most of the leaders arrested, including several of the uh, Hassanid families. Uh, expelled a number of them, discouraged others to stay in the country, which is why a number of them left to Europe and the Americas, uh, and eventually lost most of their holdings. What they did not lose, however, was the dream of re-establishing the principalities to come back and claim what rightfully is supposed to be theirs. Many people don't know the history of our family, even in Lebanon. Why? Because as Sir Winston Churchill wisely said, history is written by the victors. And by choosing to remain Christian and independent, we lost all of our lands, our kingdoms and principalities. According to the Marianite patriarch Estefan Duahi, reputed as one of the greatest Middle Eastern historians of the 17th century, and also being in a beautification process since 2008 by Pope Benedict the 16th, one of the families to be a direct descendant of the kings of Ghassan were the Sheikhs El Shamor. The Sheikhs El Shamor, faithful to the royal Ghassanid law, remained Christians. They ruled two small sovereign principalities until the 18th century for 1,500 years after King Jaffna founded the Kingdom of Gaza. The writings of the Patriarch Duai are divided into several sections, theological, liturgical and the historical. The Ghassanids and the family El Chamor are cited by his beatitude Patriarch Stephen Duai in the book The History of Times. The book speaks of Ghassanids with long chapters. It's a lot to talk today because it's very long. The oldest family in the, in the Arab world. The history of the family of the Sheikhs El Shamor was recently collected by the Maronite priest father Agnatius Al Khuri with a book published in 1948 in which he spoke about the ruling of the Sheikhs of Al Shamor of Al Ahura in addition to their transfer to the Zawi. They ruled the region of the Zawi and spread in several villages 
like Kfer Hatta, Erdat, Rashin, and Quito, and their presence in Lebanon was due to their descent from King Jebela in Al Ayam al Ghassani, the last king of the Ghassanids. We were we established in Laura, and uh, we were there for something like a thousand years, or maybe a little bit less. And uh, when we left Aura, we went to the north, which the, uh, we call the Zeri. And this is uh, uh, between, between Tripoli and Ehdi. And we, we established ourselves in Farhata, and we stayed there since 